On today's episode, we are gonna be doing some high-end DIYs and I need to apologize right out of the gate. I am going to be teasing you just a bit. And that is, I am going to be using my drill but it's gonna be obscured a little bit or cropped out because I'm not quite ready to reveal that. That will be coming up on our launch date, which I will reveal later in the episode. I'm so excited about this drill. I love it. A lot of love, effort, and time has gone into this. Two years in the making and it's all for you and I am so so thrilled with the end result. And so I'm gonna tease you a little bit. So anytime you see a little blur on the screen, it's the drill or I've cropped it out and that's intentional. You will see it very soon. So let's get started with our first DIY. One of my most talked about projects was definitely my cathedral window that I made a few years ago. It's the most requested printable. It's the most talked about. I feel like that in the tuna can chandelier. <laughs> if you haven't seen those, I'll link them down below. But I decided that we were gonna do another version of a window. And this time we're gonna add some different design elements that I think that will really polish it off a lot. So I've got a free printable that's gonna be available on my website. I'll leave the link in the description box below, but we're gonna just go ahead and put this together. Then I'll show you what to do next. So this kind of piece mills together. When it prints out, it prints out in order. So if you don't have scissors, you can just honestly do this and fold it. There we go. And you just tape this together. And I always just try to avoid where I'm gonna be tracing with the tape because sometimes it doesn't hold up as good. Okay, so we've got that. <laughs> and now we can add this piece and you see what I'm doing. Once we get the template all put together, I just cut off the edges so that I could line it up to the edges of the wood. Then I go ahead and use some graphite paper and slide that underneath and you trace out the image that we are going to be using. And so now I'm just gonna run this on my table saw. If you don't have a table saw, use a circular saw, use your jigsaw, whatever you have available to you. We're gonna cut this, get it out of the way so that we can focus in on this area. Okay, so we have the makings of our decorative window looking really good so far. And now we are going to drill some pilot holes and start jigsawing along all of our lines to cut out and make our decorative mullion window. So in order to do that, now many of you have known that I am getting ready to release the first tool in my female power tool line. I am so excited and we're gonna use that to drill the holes, but I'm not gonna show it to you yet, but you're gonna be able to see what it does, what its capabilities are, maybe hear it, but not yet. It's coming soon in just a few short weeks. In order to cut this, we do need to drill some pilot holes so that we have a place for our jigsaw blade to fit through since we're cutting on the inside and we're not cutting on the outside. So I'm gonna use a couple of clamps to kind of hold things in place as we jigsaw. I don't think we're gonna need it for our pilot holes, but we are going to do it. Woo, powerful. And you can see I am using a wood boring bit and that just is enough room for our jigsaw blade to fit through. Okay. So you're just gonna go cut back and forth following the lines as best you can, um, going one direction and back. If you find yourself stuck, just drill another hole in that negative space and cut away everything that we don't want as part of the window. Once you have it all cut out and if there's like a little inconsistency, you can use a sander to sand that out. 
All right, this is like the makings of our window. It's cute, right? But then I wanted to add a frame and I decided to do a miter frame. If you're not comfortable to you doing a miter frame yet, it really is super easy. I would encourage you to try, but you could do like a butt joint frame as well. Try a miter, it's not as hard as you think. You start with a 45 degree. I always like to hold the piece of wood up to my actual frame and make the marks on there. I find it just more simplistic to do it that way. And then and once you find one that works and you know that your rectangle is square, then you can repeat that on the other side and make two identical ones. And then you do that for the top and bottom. So really all it is is 45 degree cuts all the way around and you will have a mitered frame. And this is super, super simple. Then I set a piece of plywood to lift it up because it was a one by two. I didn't want it to jut out too far. I actually wanted to split the difference in case I ever wanted to hang it. I lifted it up by half an inch by using that scrap piece of plywood. And then I took a nail gun and nailed that in all the way around. And it was super, super simple. So with that all put together, you can go in and do putty, any imperfections that you're not happy with because we will be painting the center part. You can also putty the nail holes on your frame and just anything that you don't like how it looks, putty it. And then we let that dry. Then we go back in and do a really good sanding to get off all of the excess putty and make sure that it's all nice and smooth and prepped for paint. Then for me, what I wanted to do is I wanted to paint the center in a white chalk paint. So I simply taped off the frame to kind of protect it and then went about painting the inside in this white chalk paint. White chalk paint is really good for something like this. It dries very quickly. And then what I did once that was dry is we went and protected the white painted part. And then we went in with the anti Taking wax that I added a little bit of gray into and then I also added in some matte varnish just because I didn't want it to be like overwhelmingly dark. So you can use whatever stain or finish you like. This worked great for me and then I went ahead and did the frame and let that fully dry. And then once everything was dry I went in and distressed it a little bit to give it kind of a time worn look and that's it. It was super super simple. I actually put this on top of my china hutch because I had really originally had like a word sign up there and I'm trying to get rid of some of my word signs. And so I really like it. I think it's super cute. It was super affordable. I think all in all under $15. It's super adorable. You would spend a ton more at the store for something like this. It's not perfect. I'm not a perfect carpenter, but I'm willing to try. And it usually turns out in a way that I'm pleased. And this is no exception. I'm really happy with how this looks. It's super cute on top of my China hutch. And I hope you enjoyed that DIY. In last week's episode, I tackled DIYing a grandfather type clock <laughs> and it was super super challenging i love how it turned out but in that episode i had originally planned to do a makeover on a thrifted grandfather clock that i had picked up a few months ago. I've been mulling over a lot of different ideas. Um, you may have seen me talk about it in a past thrifting episode, and a lot of you have been asking what I ever did with that. Well, we're about to tackle that right now. What I want to do is turn it not into a, a grandfather clock. So last week I made a grandfather clock. We are going to unmake this grandfather clock and turn it into something else. Now, some of you might be going, oh my goodness, I can't believe she's doing that. It's so crazy. Because the first thing I did was knock out with a hammer the back of this clock and get rid of the clock. What I will tell you is this was not an antique. There is nothing vintage or special about it. In my opinion, I really liked the shape. I actually thought it was oak. But what I came to find out when I knocked out the back is that it was all pressed wood with like the thin paper veneer over the top. So this wasn't even a real wood. I was like, oh my goodness. Now I definitely don't feel bad for doing this because I was thinking that it was actually at least, oh, not the case. It was pressed wood with like some kind of uh, like a particle board. So I had actually purchased an oak piece of wood to use as some shelves that we're gonna now put into this, what we're gonna turn into a cabinet. And I didn't even need to fork over the money for the oak 
because it wasn't even oak to begin with. So there you go. My initial plan was to actually do some pocket holes and attach that to our cabinet that way. It didn't end up working out. It was a little too tight of quarters for that to work. It didn't matter because for what we are gonna be using it for, my backup plan is gonna be just fine. And that is, we are gonna turn it into a spice cabinet. So what I did is I just cut down three shelves and I ended up adding plenty of wood glue and nailing them from the outsides to hold it into place. So we got that attached and then what we needed to do is cut out a new backer piece to put on the back. We're not gonna attach it yet. We're just cutting it out while we're making all of our other cuts. And then I went ahead and did some putty on those nail holds on the side and it was ready to go. I taped off the glass. I didn't want to get primer all over it. Even though you can kind of scrape it off, I would have probably been fine. I just went ahead and taped off all of the glass to cover that up. Then I sprayed it with a white primer, let that fully dry, and then I went about painting the black. But what my goal was is to kind of emulate my china hutch and do a white interior and a black exterior because I've kind of got that theme going on in my house now with my grandfather clock, my china hutch. I kind of wanted to repeat that theme on a small scale. So I ended up doing three coats of black on the outside and two coats of white on the inside. And I was really happy with it, but then we needed to put on our back with a nail gun and that was really all set to go. Then we reattached our cabinet door and it looked great. I was so super thrilled with how this turned out. Like I said, I'm trying to get rid of some of those word signs. I'm trying to lean a little bit more into the French look. I would love to go modern European <laughs> eventually. This house is very styled at this point, but you know, I can make a little changes here and there. So I got rid of the bakery sign. Um, wasn't sad to see it go. That was a fun project that we did several years ago and I have no problem switching it out now. Put all of my spices in there, a cute little succulent from I think the Dollar Tree. And this turned out so good. I'm so thrilled with how it all turned out. It looks beautiful, upscale, high end, and I love it about a million times more than the grandfather clock that didn't turn out to be oak, but press particle board. It's got new life and I love it. I'm thrilled with it and I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope it gets your wheels spinning to think outside of the box and try something a little bit different. Convert a grandfather clock into a shelf maybe. Now I actually had another DIY planned for this episode, but as you can imagine, things are really busy with preparation to launch this new power tool. So I put that one on hold. I'm super excited to do it. What I'm thinking is like some fancy open shelving in my kitchen. We'll do that another time, I promise. But I wanted to do a third one, and this one is a super simple project that I think you can use a lot during this time of year, and that is, we are gonna make like a, a donut holder. Last year I made a black cat donut holder. It was more Halloween filling. Well, this one is you could use really any time of year. So I thought this would be fun. And I also took your suggestions on um, that you gave me on that black cat one. And I'll tell you what in just a second. But what you're gonna wanna do is start out with like a wood candle base that you really, really like. I found this one at Michael's. It was 50% off, making it like $6. But you can find a wood candle base in thrift stores. You can paint it whatever color you want. I liked it as is, so I didn't touch anything with this one. And then I took, I think it's like a four inch round, maybe a five inch, I'm not quite sure. And I found center. We took a half inch wood boring bit and drilled a hole in the center. Now, what this was for is we are going to be then taking a wood dowel. And then I took a little decorative finial that I had left over from an, another project. So originally I was gonna wood glue it on and tape it into place, but it was really really wiggly so I left the wood glue on there but I also used some hot glue to hold it into place while it dried you know give it that instant stick and then I did not put our dowel with the finial into place and that was because you all suggested on my black cat that I should have left the dowel um, loose I glued the dowel into the black cat 
It was like a towel, it was super cute, but it was there permanently. And a lot of you suggested, why don't I just leave the hole and just stick the dowel in as I need so that when you go to store it, it would, would take up a lot less space. And so I thought that was a fantastic suggestion. Thank you. So that influenced what I did this time around. So I went ahead and used some E6000 and hot glue and attached that wood round to our candle base and that kind of covered up some of the other mechanics and finished it out. What I ended up doing from this point is taking a little bit of matte varnish by Waverly and I put like the tiniest bit of white paint in and mixed that and then I kind of did a very light white wash on all of this. We let that fully dry and that's it. So here's the cool thing about leaving the dowel out I'm gonna show you is you can use it as a candle base in your everyday decor. But if you're hosting something and you're serving donuts, then you can go ahead, remove the candle, put in your wood dowel right in that hole and you have the perfect place to put donuts. Now, a lot of you also suggested on that cat one that you were a little nervous about it touching painted or varnished surfaces. I'm not like super, super worried about that. I am very hyper aware right now of toxic things. So I just, I figured it, it would better be safe than sorry. Take some press and seal glad wrap and wrap your little pole. You won't even notice it. It will protect it from it. I also thought it would be really cute to get a little paper doily and kind of slide that over the dowel. I didn't have any, so I didn't do it, but there you go. That way it's not touching any of the wood surfaces, keeps it nice and clean. Then all you need to do is slide on your donuts. These are some apple cider ones that I got from BJ's. They weren't very good. <laughs> they looked pretty, but they weren't very good. <laughs> Put the donuts of your choice over this dowel, stack them up, really cute. And it is a fun and adorable way to serve donuts at a party. Super, super cute, super fun. And then once you're done, remove the dowel, put a candle on it and you've got a candlestick. So there you go, it's versatile, it's a candlestick. It's also a donut holder and I hope you enjoyed that project. Okay, so I thought it would be fun to go take over my new drill and give my good friend Lisa, who has a channel here on YouTube, a little sneak peek of the drill. So let's head on over to her house, let her take a peek at it and we'll get a reaction. <laughs> we are here, let's go show her. I have something to show you. Yay, is it time? <laughs> it is. Come let's... on in. All right, this is my drill. I'm so excited. Should we open it? Is it time? Yeah, it's time. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> what do you think? I love it. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that Lisa liked the drill. That means a lot to me. <laughs> I, it's a lot of effort has gone into this and I started it because of you. You said you needed some lady power tools that were powerful, but beautiful. You were tired of the man tools and I totally understand. And so that's why I started this and we are going to be launching it Tuesday, September 26th. It will be in the evening. I don't have a time yet, so make sure you have subscribed. I will be posting more about this in my community page, so check there. It is gonna be on the evening of September 26th. We are going to be launching it live, and I am so excited to share it with you. The name, the colors, all of it. And I hope you are okay with me teasing it a little bit, and I'm just super, super excited. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And to all of my DIY goddesses out there, you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.